Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Aviva's 2018 Annual General Meeting. I'm Adrian Montague. I'm your chairman. Last year was a good year for Aviva. On the 8th of March, we were proud to announce our results for the year to the 31st of December 2017. They were strong results, which were received very positively by the investment community. Aviva had continued to grow operating profit and to increase cash remittances. Many of our businesses had registered really strong growth and our Solvency II capital position had strengthened significantly. Above all, we had continued to fulfill what we regard as our core social purpose which is helping our customers to defy uncertainty. In the days that followed our announcement, however, these strong results were overshadowed by controversy regarding what we said about our preference shares. Now, I'm sure that you are all aware of the statement we made to the effect that the preference shares were liable to cancellation at par subject to court approval and subject to a vote of the shareholders. We thought we had to raise that possibility and to clarify the status of the preference shares. Given that preference shares will not count as regulatory capital in 2026, we thought it was the duty of the board to examine what's right for the business, balancing, as, as we said explicitly, the interests of the ordinary shareholders and the preference shareholders. In the days that followed, we received views from a wide range of people. The views were often strongly worded. <laughs> Many ordinary shareholders thought we were doing the right thing, but preference shareholders were highly critical. Now, given the concerns raised, especially by the preference shareholders. On the 23rd of March, we confirmed we would take no action to cancel the preference shares. As we said in our statement, we want our preference shareholders to rest secure in their holdings. Now, it's true that this is an industry issue, as the CEO of the Financial Conduct Authority has himself said, but our original announcement created uncertainty and a small number of preference shareholders sold shares when they might not otherwise have done. And, and we are sorry for that. Our reputation and the trust that people have in us is of the utmost importance. Quite simply, it's our license to operate and we must do everything we can to maintain that reputation. So, last week, we announced a discretionary, one-off, goodwill payment to any shareholders who had lost out financially when they sold preference shares in the period from the 8th to the 23rd of March, the dates of our first and second announcements. We hope that the goodwill payment together with our previous announcement that we would not proceed with the cancellation of the preference shares, helps to demonstrate the importance we place in the trust that people vest in Aviva. We will not always get things right, but I'd like to assure you that the values and instincts of our people will always be to do the right thing by customers, by our communities, and by our shareholders. And when we fall down, we will put our hand up and do something about it. Now, in past years, I've used these introductory remarks to talk about how we're bringing technology into our business, how we try to grow the business responsibly and sustainably, whilst also making a positive contribution to society through initiatives like our partnerships with the British Red Cross and the Aviva Community Fund. I'm enormously proud 
of everything our people do to sustain these initiatives. And so, as I now move to join my colleagues, there will be a short film on these aspects of the business before we start the meeting proper. Thank you all very much. We exist to help our 33 million customers worldwide to defy uncertainty. Last year, we paid out £34.6 billion when they needed us most. Working together with our people, customers and communities, we can all face the unexpected with confidence. Our insurance and savings products help people to protect what's important to them and to shape their futures. We look after our customers and communities regardless of what life throws at them and we try to prevent some of those problems from happening to them in the first place. Climate change and extreme weather are real risks for our world. We're acting now to help our customers and communities to stay safe. Whether that's supporting communities in Canada affected by forest fires, or over a thousand of our people using our digital skills to help map some of the world's most vulnerable regions. Making sure Aviva remains carbon neutral, reducing our CO2 by 53% since 2010. Or continuing to support over 1,800 vital local projects through the Aviva Community Fund. We received £25,000 from the Aviva Community Fund to run this project in Wolverley that will include planting around 2,000 trees. The money is basically enabling the community to make flood defence happen, which is really empowering and really important. We're supporting communities through our strategic partnership with the British Red Cross. We've worked with the Red Cross since 2016. This is to set things up like the Community Reserve Volunteers, and that is a group of people who are trained and ready to respond if a disaster happens locally, like a flood. I think it's important for Aviva to support charities like the British Red Cross because the things we do aren't dissimilar. We help people to defy uncertainty, but when the worst happens, they're there to help, and that's what we try to do as well. In Singapore, our Aviva volunteers work with the Red Cross to help people live well for longer. At Aviva, we're also looking ahead at new and innovative ways that we can be there for our customers. By being disruptive, supporting innovation and investing in social entrepreneurship that opens up new ways for us to defy uncertainty. Watch Voice is an app that enables the deaf and hard of hearing to make phone calls. When that person responds, what they say is written on your smartphone in real time. And you can reply either by writing back to them or you can speak back. The Watch of Us makes a difference in people's lives. Often, a deaf person can't make a phone call by themselves, such as calling the doctor and so on and so forth. Even if making a phone call seems like a small detail in their life, this ability to do so by themselves is extremely empowering. Ulster Medical has developed a breathalyzer for disease. Every time you breathe out, you've got thousands of chemicals on your breath. And some of these are biomarkers and everything from cancer to infectious disease and inflammatory disease. We were originally introduced to Aviva Ventures. We talked a little bit about the technology and that really resonated with the work that Aviva does. And that resulted in an investment to try and support this work. So the partnership with Aviva has been transformational for Alstom. So we're trying to introduce new technologies that will save lives, and this partnership will really make that a reality. At Aviva, we are committed to growing our business in a responsible and sustainable way, making a positive contribution to society. By working together, we can innovate, build resilience, and empower our customers and communities to defy uncertainty. So now let's turn to the business of the meeting. I'd like to thank you all very much for coming today and to thank you for your interest as owners of this company. The AGM is a vital opportunity for the board
to listen to your views about Aviva and the performance of the business. And it's a chance for us to share with you what we have been doing and how we see the months to come. I also want to take this opportunity once again to thank our people for all their hard work this year. As you'll sh hear shortly from Mark, and as I said earlier, this has been a good year for Aviva. We've continued to make strong progress on our strategy and on our culture, the twin elements that are so fundamental for our plans to, for, to achieve continued sustainable growth. Aviva is our people. And I'm once again grateful for all their efforts on behalf of customers and on behalf of you, our shareholders. And for the first time, I'd like to welcome our staff, very many of whom are shareholders, as our proceedings are being broadcast live today to them. So let me set out the agenda for today. Shortly, I'll introduce the members of your board. Then I'll hand over to Mark, who will give you a more in-depth view of the company's performance. His remarks will be available, as usual, on the company's website after the meeting. Then there'll be an opportunity for you to ask questions on the business of the meeting, some of which you registered earlier this morning. And finally, we'll move into the formal part of the meeting, when I'll ask you to vote on the resolutions set out in the notice of meeting. First then, my fellow directors. We've built a strong board, and as part of this, Morris Tullock will be standing for election by shareholders today. Morris, who's on your far left, joined the board as an executive director on the 20th of June last year. He's been with Aviva for more than 25 years, and his appointment gives further profile to the group's European and international businesses. To Morris's left is Belen Romana Garcia, non-executive director. Her background in financial services in Spain and the EU brings an invaluable perspective to our proceedings. Then we have non-executive director Michael Meyer, who has great experience across financial services, retail, and government. On Michael's other side, we have Keith Williams, non-executive director, who's also chairman of the audit committee. To his left is Tom Sodart, the chief financial officer. Immediately to my right is Mark Wilson, our chief executive, of course. To my left, Kirsty Cooper, our group general counsel and company secretary. To Kirsty's left, is Glyn Barker, Senior Independent Director, with a, an extensive knowledge of both of the group and wide business experience. Then we have Andy Briggs, Chief Executive of UK Insurance, responsible for all Aviva's insurance businesses in the UK. On Andy's left is Claudia Rani, Non-Executive Director and Chair of the Governance Committee. And then at the far end, we have Michael Hawker, our longest service, serving director, who is also chairman of the Risk Committee. Last but not least, behind me, we have Patricia Cross, non-executive director and chair of the Remuneration Committee, who's joining us from Australia. Normally, of course, Tricia would be here on the platform with us. She's very disappointed not to be here, but she's recently had an operation on her knee and she's been told she can't fly for a few weeks. So, the ones of telecommunication. Ladies and gentlemen, your board. Before I introduce Mark, I'm just going to return to the results we announced on the 8th of March. As I said earlier, it was a strong year. And as a result, your board is proposing a final dividend of 19 pence per share, taking the full year dividend to 27.4 pence per share. This corresponds to a 50% dividend payout ratio. In line with our improved earnings quality and cash flows, in November, we announced that we would increase our dividend payout ratio target to a range of 55 to 60% of operating earnings per share by 2020.